Three recent deaths involving police are being investigated. A wildfire that's out of control in Halifax has forced thousands of people to evacuate. Some Canadian Special Forces officers have the privileged position of being untouchable when it comes to harassment complaints against them. And tensions are on the rise in northern Kosovo as three ethnic Albanians are elected mayor, where the vast majority of Serbs boycotted the election. Good morning. It's Tuesday, May 30th. I'm Nora, and here are your headlines. First, I have to start this morning by acknowledging that Danielle Smith is the new premier of Alberta. She won a majority last night. And apologies, I guess, or condolences to the folks in that province who know just how bad it could be under Danielle Smith. There's a lot to say about what's happened there and why. And I don't think the Daily News podcast is going to say it, but Probably Sandy and Nora will probably try to dive into it in a week once the dust has settled and take a look out for my substack because I have a feeling I'm going to be inspired to write a quick thing today. Anyway, as I say, condolences really to that province. And uh, there's a lot of soul searching, I think, that needs to happen on the left about how we have not managed to do anything against the increased corporate control and rising fascism within this country and some of its elected officials. But today, let's start with three recent deaths that were related to police that are all now the subject of police oversight investigations. The first happened yesterday, just outside of Woodstock, Ontario. A collision between an off-duty OPP officer and a driver of a school bus has led to both drivers being killed. The collision happened at a rural intersection just before 7 a.m. yesterday, and no children were on the bus at the time. The intersection only has two stop signs, and though local town council had approved for there to be a four-way stop last January, it was supposed to be added very soon, but hadn't yet been added. The family of the bus driver has asked that his information not be shared. Photos from the crash show that there was someone going at an extremely high speed, as the carnage is pretty bad. No other information has been shared about who may have been at fault or what might have happened. I imagine that that's what we will get, maybe, out of the SIU investigation. Next, in Calgary, a low-speed car chase ended when Calgary police shot at a cube van that they thought had been stolen. Two people have died as a result. Calgary police said that the call was a response to three people being reported as being impaired, quote unquote, or suspicious, quote unquote. And I'm quoting from the write up from Killer Cops Canada, a website that tracks police related deaths in Canada. When police caught up with the drivers of the van, witnesses say that police shot through the windows of the van at the driver and the passenger. Now, listen to how CBC News wrote about this. Quote, Officers followed the slow-moving vehicle as it continued swerving along the road. Police vehicles were placed in strategic locations to make sure the van didn't get into the heavily populated downtown. A number of attempts were made to contain the van, but due to its size, it broke through the containment. Police say that 45 minutes after the incident began, the situation escalated to the point where one officer discharged their firearm, killing two of the suspects inside the vehicle. A third person was taken into custody, unquote. Passive, passive, passive voice, all saying very little, except making sure that we think that it's very likely that the shooting was warranted. This is so frustrating about police coverage in this country. That clearly all came from police accounts. Firearm was discharged, tried to contain the vehicle, broke through the containment, trying to make sure the vehicle didn't get into Calgary's busy downtown. I mean, it's all spin that's basically telling us that this was a warranted kill. Of course, we don't know what the story was. We don't know who these individuals are. And even if the person driving the van was completely stoned or or drunk or whatever, they were driving erratically but slow. You don't pay for your life in a situation like that. I'm so glad for sources like Killer Cops Canada that can cut through some of the spin, recognizing, of course, that when all the journalism you get related to police shootings is from literally the police, that there's only some amount of spin that can be cut through until we actually start getting eyes on the ground and doing our own 
firsthand journalism to see and find out what exactly happened. And really, had there not been those witness accounts saying that they saw the police walking to the windows and shooting these people dead, we wouldn't even have known that. Next to Halifax, where a wildfire is burning out of control and has damaged somewhere close to 200 homes. Thousands of people are under mandatory evacuation orders. The evacuations touch about 16,400 people in Hammonds Plains, Upper Tantalon, and Pockwalk. They're all suburban communities, about 25 kilometers from Halifax. The most probable theory at the moment is that the fires were caused by human activity. Many schools have been closed as a result of the fires. And one thing that I've only seen one activist who I'm friends with raise is the problem with suburbs that encroach far too closely on wooded areas. These are recently built suburbs and they do get quite close to the woods. And so when there's a forest fire, of course, the fires come very close to the suburbs. Hopefully we'll hear more about that in the next couple of days, but the fire is still raging out of control. And so... Hopefully they get that in control first. Next to the Canadian Forces, the Ottawa Citizens' David Palazzi is reporting that Canadian Special Operations Forces Command have received reports that warn that some members of the Special Forces have been protected from facing sexual harassment and other forms of misconduct charges. These groups evade accountability and people who raise the concerns about members of this protected elite, quote unquote, often face reprisals. In particular, there is so much fear about coming forward to report harassment among members of the special forces that people are worried that they will become targeted too. Palazzi reports this from a 427 Special Operations Aviation Squadron in Petawawa. Quote, members are experiencing a high level of work family conflict, job stress and work overload as much as members admire the values of CanSoftCom quote, we will find a way and quote, relentless pursuit of excellence, unquote, are followed at the detriment of their families and their own health, unquote. One of the updates to the special forces leadership also mentioned that there are persistent myths that families and women have no place in or near the special operations division. And finally, Reuters is reporting that about 25 NATO soldiers in three northern Kosovo towns were injured by Serbian protesters. The soldiers were Italian and Hungarian. The NATO division K4 said that the attacks were unprovoked. Serbian state television said that two Serbs were also injured. Tensions have been rising since elections in northern Kosovo delivered several ethnic Albanian mayors to office. The elections have been boycotted by local Serbs, even though they are the vast majority in these areas. As a result, in one municipality, for example, North Mitrovica, the voter turnout was just 3.5%. Of course, Reuters makes that point, but doesn't then make the link between how do any of these mayors have legitimacy with such a low voter turnout. In Zvikan, Kosovo, police sprayed a crowd of Serbian protesters with tear gas as they tried to enter a municipal building. The protesters also threw tear gas and stun grenades at the NATO soldiers. U.S. troops surrounded the Liposevic town hall with barbed wire to keep out Serbian protesters, and NATO soldiers blocked off the town hall in Zubin Potok, also to stop Serbs from entering. While 90% of Kosovo is made up of ethnic Albanians, the northern populations are majority Serbian. They have never recognized Kosovo's independence from Serbia and have instead called for a 2013 deal to be implemented that would have created autonomous municipalities in northern Kosovo, where Serbians are the majority. Instead, as it seems, NATO quote-unquote peacekeepers are trying to stop the ethnic majority from accessing their municipal buildings and protesting. Those are your headlines for Tuesday, May 30th. I'm Nora, and it is, yes, Tuesday. It's Sandy and Nora Day. No episode today, but that's the last week you'll have to wait. We will be back next week, and because I'm on the road today and for the rest of this week, I'm not going to drop in anything. So you'll have to deal with the silence of your day, which I mean, silence is beautiful. So enjoy it. (laughs) I'll talk to you tomorrow.